are recording, I think, hopefully. Awesome. We're off and running. Um, all right, guys, so I'll just introduce myself. My name is Michelle Webster. Um, I'm Namgis on my dad's side of my family, um, and I'm the manager of sport development and community engagement with iSpark, which is the Indigenous Sport Physical Act Activity and Recreation Council. Uh, so iSpark, everything that you've seen with the iSpark on it, that's us. Um, I'm super pleased to be joining this call from the uh, comfort and safety of my home, which is located in the Okanagan Nation. Uh, I'm up here in Kelowna. Um, and iSpark and Pacific Sport Okanagan are super excited to welcome all of you to the Managing Expectations and Providing Support During Uncertain Times webinar. Um, and just before we uh, introduce uh, Dr. Shauna Taylor, uh, we'd like to open our evening by inviting our elder and senior advisor, Alec Nelson, to lead us with an opening prayer. If you're on here, Alec, I can uh, unmute you there. You're still on mute, I think. Can you hear me? You're there. We got you. Got me. Okay. Okay. First of all, thank you for the wonderful invitation to come up and witness and listen and uh, be a part of a wonderful webinar theme and subject and um, I'm speaking to you from Victoria the, and my voice is echoing in uh, the Kwanin territories and and of course we recognize all of the traditional territories that we're calling from and uh, I just want to thank the creator for this moment thanking the creator for all of technology and all what needs to be done for us to con continue our communication and the theme itself uh, is a wonderful theme, recognizing we connect with our creator. And um, we want to thank the creator for uh, setting a path for our personal growth, our families, our communities, and how we walk our, our, our nations. And um, thank our creator for especially our families, our children, and uh, within that, our elders. Um, so I ask the creator to be with us as we um, echo our wisdom and guidance and listen to the wonderful presentation that's going to be presented. And um, so with that, thank you. Thank you, my dear. Thank you so much. Thank you so much yeah, for uh... that. Oh, sorry, what was that? Thank you so much for uh, opening our session in such a good way and creating this uh, this positive space for us to uh, to share. Um, we we'll always appreciate your words and your time for joining us. Thank you for that. Um, these are certainly uh, challenging times in finding ways to support our young athletes and now moving forward into a, a return to play plan. In many circumstances, these are uncertain times. And so uh, to help us kind of navigate those waters and uh, and the uncertainty and to provide us with some tools. Um, I'm so pleased to be able to introduce you guys to uh, our presenter this evening, who is Dr. Shauna Taylor. And I got I have to read this because Shauna's been involved in a lot. She's she's been doing some really great things. So I'm gonna refer to my notes this way for these. Um, Dr. Shauna Taylor is dedicated to holistic athlete and coach development through her work as the executive director of Pacific Sport Okanagan. Uh, she sits on Via Sport Women and Girls Advisory Groups, as well as a Provincial Safe Sport Working Group. Shauna is the current chair of the Canadian Sports Psychology Association and is a professor at UBC in the High Performance Coaching and Technical Leadership Program. Dr. Taylor has been a consultant with grassroots to Olympic Paralympic levels for 20 years. She has been involved in athlete and integrated team support for more than eight major game cycles. In addition, Shauna operates a private practice and has special interest in creating a sport system that promotes holistic athlete development and honors safety and inclusion for all. And with that, I'm going to turn the show over to you, Dr. Shauna Taylor. Thank you so much for, uh, for doing this for us tonight. Thank you, Michelle. 
and I feel really honored to be a part of this presentation and this new opportunity for our organizations to work together and to Team BC and the province of BC in helping to support our athletes and coaches. So thank you everyone for tuning in tonight. I'm really excited to hear from you. Please don't hesitate to put chat for questions into the chat box. Michelle's going to help me out and I'll try to address as many as I can at the end and anything that I can't get you a quick answer for I commit to getting back to you on. So hopefully we have your contact information, which I think we would because you've signed up for the webinar um, in order to get you the info that you need. So the purpose for tonight, I was brainstorming with the iSpark leadership team and we felt like this was a really important topic because it's something that we all share. This pandemic has created a sense of unity that maybe we didn't even know we needed to be or wanted to be part of in that we are truly all at a at a stopping point and had a lot of things that we had planned and set our hearts on and our athletes were so looking forward to have been either cancelled or postponed so so what are we going to do about this this instance that we're in now and how can we promote resiliency and coach in this uncertain time so the purpose is to help build those resiliency skills and I've created something and in, in working with the iSpark team I'm calling it the iSpark approach and I've made it an acronym so that you can remember it <laughs> and hopefully it will it will stick with you and I have a series of tools as well that I'll be creating to give to you um, open source for anyone to use at any point if you feel that they are useful with your with your athletes and cohort. Also looking at shifting their perspective from what can't I do now, you know, all these things have been taken away. I miss my team. I miss these things that used to be set for me in stone and goals I was working towards. And how can we shift it into thinking that this could potentially be an opportunity for something new, perhaps some innovation. How will we use this as a sector? How will you use this as a coach and a community leader? And then of course, some, resources as well I hope to provide at the end. I wanted to be able to give a quick uh, manifesto statement for you of what our mission is at Pacific Sport Okanagan. We share many of the same goals as the Ice Park team to empower communities to play, participate, and perform at their best through sport. And we know that this means for some folks just participating and getting out and moving is their goal. And for others, it's high performance. It's making it to the North American Indigenous Games and representing their community and Team BC and their sport. So it's a, it's a big continuum, but everybody, I hope, will feel a part of it as we're all moving uh, through these uncertain times. So we're going to think provincially and at the same time, we know that things are very different for each and every one of you on this call depending on your team, depending on your community, depending on the young people that you are coaching. Every circumstance is gonna be different. So I'm trying to give some tools that will be convertible and that you will be able to uh, use in support for yourselves, but also for your athletes in the future. We don't know what those dates are gonna look like now. We don't know what the rescheduling is gonna look like, when the full restart will be in place and what that restart will look like. So what do we do in the meantime? And so that's what we'll be focusing on. So we'll dive right into it, the idea of promoting resiliency. So what does that mean to help an athlete build their resiliency skills? We know, and probably all of you can think of, the different athletes that you work with have very different personalities, different circumstances, different ways that they respond to challenges, uh, different traumas from our past, and so all of them are going to, to some degree, require an individual approach. And this is a challenge, but it's also a blessing and honestly a great honor that we have as leaders to change these young people's lives through sport. So hopefully some of these things that we're going to talk about tonight will help you move forward with confidence that you have some strategies to do that. So here are some quick statistics, and of course these are just these are off of the public health office that are, that are um, stated daily in Dr. Bonnie Henry's 
um, statements to the province about numbers. We've got lots of folks fully recovered. There is some good news, but there's still a lot of uncertainty. And we, we know that young people, I hear from a lot of athletes, I work with many of them in individually and also with teams here in the Okanagan and all across Canada. And athletes feel conflicted, as do coaches, because they can feel the compassion and the empathy and the fear and some anxiety about this pandemic. And at the same time, sometimes they're struggling with the guilt of, I know all that, but I want to get back at it. I, I can't, how do I process that? I'm 15. My one bright light in my day and in my year is when I'm with my team. So they can reconcile it, but it's an internal tension and a struggle for what is going on outside of them and the fact that they don't know when sport will be back the way we want it to be back. Sport is family for many of us. So one of the, um, Dr. Henry's been moving forth with the a concept of that's pretty simple, but is a really great leadership practice is to lead with kindness and safety and patience. And so I, I would, would challenge all of my peers and, uh, and all of you and everyone else that we work with to think about taking this to heart as well. It's human nature that we want to focus on what we can't do and the restrictions and to be frustrated with all the postponements whether it was the BC Games or some provincial championships, local championships, regular league play, even having a, 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 a large practice with over 50 uh, participants in the same location, all of that's been put on hold. And then of course the bigger games like NAG. But shifting the perspective to focus on what we can do, even though we don't know exactly when some of these other outcome goals and these, these deadlines can come into place, um, we've started using around our office when someone's in a really downer mood and saying, well, we can't even da -da -da -da, I'll throw yet in there. We can't do it yet. Like it'll be back. Just throw a yet on there. And so that's kind of my big, you know, pull the yet out of the pocket and that can kind of defuse, um, because there were even a lot of things that we could, we've started to do now as we open up carefully and tentatively and kindly. Um, that we couldn't do two months ago in our communities. So um, there's that piece or also shifting the perspective to, but we're gonna be ready when that day comes. So we're gonna use this time, we're gonna be ready, right? And this is what we're gonna focus on is being ready when it's all systems go. And so that approach with your young, hungry, um, super keen athletes, these two approaches can be effective. It doesn't defuse all of them and it doesn't solve everything, but it can, it can help to some degree. So some of the other things I thought I would put together, I, I work for a virtual clinic and it's called the Canadian Center for Mental Health and Sport. So we only work, our only clients are athletes and they're all across Canada and some of them are competing internationally. And we've really had to do this worldwide. And so whether it's here on our shores or internationally, having some kind of an approach that we can stick to and have some tangible tools and a perspective, I thought I would personalize it and, and create something that would be unique to the iSpark community and all of you, the partner uh, coaches and sport associations and clubs and nations across the province. So what the iSpark approach looks like is it starts with being able to identify where your athletes at, where you're at right now with what is going on, figuring out how and what and, and when uh, we can support what that looks like, practicing some of the tools that we're gonna go through tonight. And uh, there'll be some resources that I can forward to you as well that you'll be able to hopefully use with your teams individually and even virtually via Zoom. And then the two A's, accepting and adapting. And those two are tough. Acceptance waves goes in ebbs and flows and adaptation is critical because it's it helps us to not feel left behind and it will help prepare us and make us be ready when we can return to sport. And finally, relating. So finding all the ways that we're interconnected and then the connection and communication of that. So we'll start with the identify piece. So this is just another way of saying checking in and Promoting self-awareness in your athletes is, I think, one, it's an important life skill 
um, for all of us, coaches as well, just being aware with how am I feeling with this today? What are my emotions feeling like? Where's my sort of where's my attitude at today? And uh, getting some basic feedback tools or having simply a, ch a simple chat or a conversation. You don't really need a tool, but sometimes a tool is great, especially when you're working with un younger athletes that aren't as able to express themselves without having something to look at or something to start the conversation. So one thing that I like to use a lot because it's an international symbol when we're on the road is a stoplight. And so just having the stoplight, where are you at today? Are you red, amber, or green, good to go? You know, with home, with school, with work, which zone are you in? So getting them to understand that those zones have feelings associated with them and maybe different levels of functioning. And then we can kind of know, wow, you know, I've got half my team in the red zone on this situation here. I think it's time for us to do a team builder. We're gonna do a Zoom call tonight, or I'm gonna put out a fitness challenge or we're gonna get them to do a TikTok video, or just being able to gauge sort of where folks are at and then um, being able to adjust accordingly because we know that sport is so much more than just a pastime for a lot of our athletes. It is a way of life. It is one of their safest connections that they have with people that they love and care about. For many of you, you play almost a parental role. You're truly a mentor. So without having the same things that they used to be able to rely on, some of them can feel pretty rudderless. This was something we were looking forward to all year. So checking in with the stoplight. Red zone, we want to stop and assess. Okay, if you're in red, let's talk about it. And then let's act and figure out something we can do. Caution, there's some challenges, but they're coping. And then green is, we're good there. Okay, well, let's continue. Let's keep growing. I'm gonna go over at different parts of the brain that are functioning, or in some cases aren't functioning that well, um, when we're in these different zones next week on Wednesday at noon. So one week today at noon, I'm gonna do another free webinar for all of your athletes. So please send out, and Michelle's gonna do shout out at the end. Um, but I'm actually gonna, I find that athletes are amazing at absorbing. The more they can understand their brain and the more they can understand how their brain and body are connected, with their emotions, the more they're able to feel a sense of empowerment and even acceptance that that's okay and that's human. So we're gonna go over this in more detail next week. And on this slide, just shows a little example of how someone can be in different zones depending on where they are. Like they're really frustrated with sport right now. I mean, their personal life isn't great. School, they're feeling a bit anxious, but loving the time with friends and family and all of that connection has happened. So this could be a snapshot of any one athlete. They could be all over the stoplight and it can just be a great tool and a conversation starter. So that's identifying, so where are, we, where are we at? And then once we've identified, we need to figure out how we support them and create a support system. So who is in your community, your team, your organization sports system? And again, all of your athletes are gonna have different supports. So whether it's within your team, other members of their community, their family, the elders that they reach out to and rely on, and where are their gaps? So there are some of those athletes that we know might not be as blessed as others in having some of these supports. So are there ways that our organization can buddy up and double up maybe for that one athlete that's struggling and has a gap there? And in times like this, in a global pandemic, it would probably be a good time for us to exercise um, ways and figuring out how we can construct some of those support systems. They'll be internal, so the ones inside themselves, the supports that the skills they already have, their spirituality, tuning into their culture, all of those things that give them meaning, and then could be the external supports of the people and the systems and the teams and the networks. So two different types, the internal and external. I like to use sim um, symbols of nature a lot with the athletes. I find they really uh, resonate a lot with them. So the spider web, super unique, but every spot on that web is connected somehow to someone else. And we gotta figure out who's in their web and who's connected to whom. So I'll get athletes even to, to draw out their web or if 
they're a volleyball athlete or a softball athlete will just take a picture of a ball and they'll put people's names or they'll put this a bit of a team builder just to be able to have them actually name and list the things they draw from and the people that they draw from. They're not alone. So what does that support system look like? Um, buddy systems are great. So if you've got your introverts on the team that have trouble opening up and you're not really sure if they're getting the support required, you got that more outgoing player or a young assistant coach, buddy up. So we make sure that we've got some webs that we're helping them weave all with our guidance as well if they're, ha if they're struggling. Um, we know that the teams are having different challenges and that we're apart, but we're not alone. We're all still part of the web. So the web's a really good metaphor, really good image to use because spiders are one of the most resilient creatures everywhere and they come up with these beautiful, unique things every single day. Um, and then just little mini bubble training groups. So you might have some that are in the same community and or family, and so they form their own little mini support group. So once we've potentially assembled or started to brainstorm what that support system looks like, then we want to start thinking about practicing some of the skills and tools. So you're the ones, you're the technical leads, you're the strategic minds. So I'm definitely not going to tell you how to do the strategy and the technical skills of your sport. But my area is sort of more from the neck up where we're looking at the tools, the mental tools, um, in addition to some of the physical tools and skills that they know. So what do they already know and feel good about? So let's encourage them to do those more. But what are some new ones maybe that we might want to reinforce? And then what about you? You know, if you're overwhelmed, what are some things that maybe you could start integrating in? Do some of those great Fit Nation Zoom calls I've been seeing, you know, and hearing all this about. <laughs> those look awesome. So making sure you're making time for you as well, integrating in all of these. One tool or um, an approach, I guess, that I like to use with, with teen athletes, because it's really simple and easy for them to understand, tougher for them maybe to conceptualize sometimes, but once they get the hang of it, um, it can be quite useful. Get them to think of a moment where they were really acting with a real emotional response. They were in their emotional mind. So for the most part, what they were feeling was so overwhelming, it was guiding their actions. Then to think about a time when they were a little more emotionally detached, fairly calm, kind of really intellectual about something. Yeah, they were really thinking it through, just having a reasonable conversation, getting really practical, down to basics, didn't have as much emotion guiding the decision making. So we know they're capable of both. Well, when we're in crisis or we really need to be able to integrate both, because we've got tough emotions, but we need to make some reasonable decisions, you see the little overlap area, and that's all part of growing. That's part of growing up. That's part of a seasoned athlete learning to harness their emotional mind and the reasonable mind as often as possible while they can intersect. And that's our jobs as mentors uh, to be able to enhance this. So I get them to keep track of the times during the week that they were in emotional mind, um, often the times when I'm the red part of the stoplight and then um, getting them to think of times when they were being really practical and rational. So just different tools like that. Don't have to take tons of notes right now. I know I've got a bunch of stuff blah, on, the, on the slide here, but I'm going to be providing a, a toolkit that I'll pass on to Michelle and uh, she'll be able to make available to all of you too to give you some ideas of some of these uh, mental tools and self-regulation skills, if these are the challenges that they're coping with. And uh, you'll see the one at the bottom, it's maybe not so much a tool, but it's a, it's a state of mind. So more of the practical side, becoming the student of their game. If they can't compete in it right now, how about they look up all the new rule changes? How about they look at, you know, who is currently, who's got the best offense right now? and you know get online start checking it out start checking out video almost being like a a scout of the game uh on your behalf give them a mission make them feel useful um and make them see that they also are part of that tactical and strategic learning curve on their team it isn't all about you having to give them all of the information they can seek some of it out too now's a good time for them to do that 
uh, other tools, this is just an example of having a little toolkit. And sometimes some athletes will like to have a little wallet card that they might have in their bag or they'll take with them to training <clears throat> or today, these days, they have it, I guess, at home with them, which is where all of us are, are stuck right now. So they've got some kind of chilling out methods if they do find that they're getting stressed out or they're getting overwhelmed. So the one breath relaxation kind of speaks for itself. And these other ones, I'm going to get into some details when I hand over the, um, the resources to Michelle, but just doing a head to toe check in, stand outside, stand out in nature, and just really do a body scan all the way through like your sports car, you know, front, front to back right? Going through all the systems, visualizing themselves, participating in an amazing um, performance that we hope they'll get to sooner versus later. And, uh, and then stretching and relaxing and engaging and relaxing their muscles as well. So these are just some mind-body techniques. So that's the sort of the toolkit piece and practicing some of those tools. And then we get into the accepting and the adapting part. So we know that there are certain things right now that unfortunately are out of our control. And these are the things that we have had to accept as a sports sector. We've had to postpone and even cancel a lot. And some of these things can never, can never really be replayed because that cohort of athlete is growing up or growing out, aging out of a system, or it's a time of great disappointment. So that stuff, we can't, we can't really control it. We need to find a way to frame it that we've accepted it has happened, but there are other things that are adjacent to it or in the future that we can control. And that's where the adaptation comes in and hopefully where we're gonna focus our, our time tonight. One thing they can accept and should accept is that it's okay to be upset. It's okay to be disappointed and frustrating. And it's really important for all of us as their leaders and mentors and coaches to help them almost normalize those uncomfortable emotions. It's okay, we're all feeling it. But really encouraging the development beyond the disappointment and the anger, we didn't get to test these skills until this massive adversity hit us. Now we know what we're made of. So now we're gonna have to learn how to adapt and we'll adapt this individually as families, within your nations and your, your communities, and then within our broader sport community as well. So shifting the perspective, this is all gonna pave the way for the future of the way that potentially they're gonna be able to handle big tests in their life moving forward. That's what I'm trying to look at it as one big test that no one wanted to take. <laughs> it's like one big exam <laughs> that everyone wanted to skip, but, here it is. So really trying to pave the way to change your perspective. And so one way that we do that, one team builder, I think we did this with the softball program with Michelle, as a matter of fact, and, and Joni heading into some championships that we needed to figure out that we had to accept what we couldn't control. And we just had a big thing of paper and a, a big um, flip chart. And we just wrote down everything that we were going to let go because it was happening and there was nothing we could do about it. We knew the forecast wasn't great, you know, or we knew X, Y, Z. Okay, well, it is what it is. So put that out there, and we just did a big brainstorm of what that looked like. And so that's easy to do on Zoom, that's easy to do on a physically distanced meeting individually, or to just send that out via email, or if you have a way that you're communicating that's best, like a WhatsApp or by phones, we're, we are so lucky there are so many ways to connect it's almost overwhelming and then the second half of that is okay but if that's being the case what can we take and frame from those things that we are now that we are in control of what does that look like and really start to shift our energy towards what that list, list looks like because that feels a lot more empowering when we're focusing over in that other direction we know that and i'm sure that all of you have a wealth of stories where the constraints put upon you created some of the biggest intervention, innovations rather, and discoveries about yourself and your community and your resiliency 
and I'm sure that your elders can do the same. We have so many beautiful stories of constraints that ended up giving birth to something we didn't even expect initially. So what, we, what that might look like is gonna look completely different for all of your teams. So another brainstorm activity is we really dissect it right down to the limitation. So, okay, we have less time for competition. We're frankly not allowed to compete right now in some of our sports. We can't do that person to person. You know, I've been working recently virtually with combat sports and, and they can't be in, in combat mode in close proximity. So what does that mean for opportunity? It's more time to perfect individual skills, more boxing on the bag, more boxing with that one training partner that is in your bubble, more um, discovering tactics, like I was saying, being the student of your sport, getting online, looking at your role model and just studying and visualizing what they're doing in the hopes that eventually we're gonna get the opportunity to physically do it too. So for every limitation, less time for for formal practices, means there's an opportunity for new approaches. So online things or different forms of fitness than we never thought, enhancing our flexibility, enhancing our mental flexibility, um, new ways to communicate as a team, new tactics to brainstorm for that chance when we get out there. So just a way to shift some of that discomfort and that frustration into something, a place where we can put our emotions in a, in a productive way. And then another thing to think about is, because you know we all do sport for a variety of reasons, everyone's motivated really differently, and that's what we're also gonna focus on, another plug. How many times can I plug the webinar next week? <laughs> another thing I'm gonna focus on next week is how to keep these amazing athletes motivated, because some of them are just sick of Zoom, they are sick of doing things disconnected physically. They want to be able to have something visceral again. They want to stay motivated, but they're starting, it's starting to waver and it's getting tough. But getting them to tap into this concept of, we need to get them back to when they were little kids and they were first taking on some of these, these skills and these sports for the pure fun of it, but also just to master brand new things, brand new skills that they didn't know before they held that bat. They had no idea until they watched a grown up do it or grab that ball and throw it. And the mastery orientation comes from within. So that's where every curious, thirsty child takes on these amazing, beautiful things like dance and sport and music, right? Ego is when we start to want to measure ourselves up of how good we are against others, right? And that's what all, I mean, it's competitive sport. That's why we do what we do. And I'm not, I'm not looking down on that because that's awesome and that's what we're doing. But demonstrating superiority is pretty tough to do right now behind a screen. <laughs> so, so given that that's our constraint right now, where can we go with that? So um, this might be an era where we can look back on the summer of 2020 and, and from the spring into the summer and into, into the fall, that we focused on mastery, mastery of skills, mastery of our mental skills, mastery of our emotion, mastery of our coming together as a community and protecting our most vulnerable. And this is just a cute, I thought this would be kind of a fun video to demonstrate this little dude's, you know, in mastery mode <laughs> with his diapers on at probably about 20 months old. But this video I'm about to play, all he really has, he has a bunch of dirt, and that looks like maybe something that's supposed to hold up um, an umbrella on his patio and his dog, you know, and a ball and a bat. So I'll just let this little brief video play. Oops, will it play? Oh, one sec. Love that dog. I want that dog. <laughs> Throws the bat. And by the way, they've been doing this for like ever. You can hear the dog. It's just been going, going, going. I had to cut the video a bit, but it's just going. <laughs> 
He's getting a little dirt, getting a little dirt, putting his dirt all over himself and the bat. Whoa. Michelle was laughing earlier saying, that last swing was a little bit like 2020. <laughs> it's the 2020 swing. You know, that's what it feels like these last couple of months. But you know, it's, it's a kid and his dog and a ball and a bat and a place to stick the ball. And that's how it starts. And then things get real complicated and that's okay and that's cool. And that's how we get great at what we do in sport is we get more resources, we get more expertise. But tapping back into the mastery, you know, show them that little video. I'll have to find the link and I'll, I'll send it to you. Like this, this is where we started. And this is where we need to get again, that intense, that love of being able to do things on our own and being able to be self or intrinsically motivated um, coming from within too. So takes us to the R. The R is relating. And there's one thing that certainly happened over um, these past few months is we've seen the way that so many of us are now interconnected. And uh, there are so many links between so many different parts of our, our lives that have come to a halt. And only did we realize how important they were until we weren't allowed to do them or people until we weren't allowed to see them, right? Weren't allowed to be in their presence. So making those links between your sport, your culture, your spirit, your values, the things that really drive them and bring them joy. So those four things are so key. And how do we fit all these into the holistic model? And in order to help them learn through this time of adversity, and this is, I just love this beautiful model from several, I've seen it now in several modules, including the Aboriginal, co the coaching module, which was amazing. And when still living in Ottawa, working with Aboriginal Sports Circle, it was called at that time. So really having them, this would be another cool web exercise or a mapping exercise of some homework for them to work on and to present to the team or to you or even just to do for them inside for only them to know and to do this this work and to jot it down to have a have a training journal have a log and see where those links and those relating pieces all fit to where they are right now so linking the physical cultural spiritual and the mental that includes both intellectual and emotional in there as well so making sure we have them encourage them to tap into their own holistic model. Something we can do in each of those areas too, is we can set some personal goals that are aligned with our values in each of those areas. So I wanna explore this more. I want this to happen by the end of July. I wanna work on this this week, whether it's physical, mental, spiritual, um, cultural. And so the goal setting piece again, wow, three plugs. Okay, I'm at three plugs for the session. <laughs> <laughs> next week i don't need an agent i'm my own agent um so next <laughs> next uh week at noon I'm actually going to talk a bit about goal setting in that because the whole thing it's going to be about motivation and different ways that we can tap into that stoplight brain and get things charged up when they're all they really want to do is sit on the couch and watch netflix and maybe eat a bag of chips <laughs> but they already did that for an hour so what else can we do um and i know myself there were lots of up and ups and downs over the last couple of months um where this became really important to have something tangible some goals to to set forward and they have to set them that's another thing too the more we can encourage our athletes to set them and be part of that, that team, the more, they're, the more they're likely to actually complete them and take some actions. Where they might need your support is to have a little bit of accountability. So having to check back into you, with you and report on it. Or that's where the buddy system works or having a bit of a team competition because let's face it, they're competitive. And since we can't all get on the field of play right now, this might be a great way for them to buddy up with the goal setting um, piece like goal setting competition. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how stoked they're going to be on that when all they really want to do is go and play. But you know what? You can have a lot of fun with this. And so some of the tools um, of the different goal setting areas and techniques I'll, I'll send out to you as well. 
And so then the final piece is the connection. So I just think it's cool that we're all able to connect here tonight with several dozen amazing coaches and leaders from all over um, being able to work together because we care. We care about athletes. We care about our sector. This is so important. So we might feel isolated, but we're in fact, it's like that big spider web. Um, we are all really interconnected. So making sure we open up the lines of communication, reach out to the ones we haven't heard from in a while, or those that we think are the most vulnerable. How can we connect with one another, but also the connection with nature, the connection back with community. Will, sport will be there waiting for us. It will be there and we'll be ready. Um, but we also need to make sure we maintain all these other critical connections too with our spirit and nature and our communities we live in every day. And we do that, we get a good solid base, a good strong platform once the doors are opened up and we're able to compete in sport again. So some of the next steps, thinking, prevent, oh, can I do just five more minutes? Is that okay? Am I okay for time? Or is that okay? Okay, I'll, I won't be much longer. So um, to think provincially and then, and then acting really um, with yourself locally, we know we've had a lot, we've been bombarded by all these return to sport plans and all kinds of um, guidelines that have been presented. So checking in regularly, and I know uh, from this point forward, I'd certainly love to stay in close contact with iSpark as well, just sort of keeping a uh, finger on the pulse of how things are going with different sports throughout the province as well. Each of you will be starting, to, if you haven't already been thinking about your return to sport plan. So your provincial sport organization or whoever is leading that return to sport for you might be of some assistance or your regional uh, sports center and, and iSpark could lend some assistance too. Having a team that can help you implement this iSpark concept of this resiliency plan. So whether that's an assistant coach, maybe you've got a manager or there's some parents, or maybe it's a really strong leadership core on your team. You've got a few athletes that really step it up and are, and are really drawn to and are, are natural leaders. They can help you um, move forward with some of this. Again, shifting to the what you can do versus what you can't do and know that what we can do this week might look different next week and next month. So we got to kind of get okay with this uncertainty thing that we're stuck in. So via sports release there, Return to play guidelines last week. The recreation has also released theirs, the BCRPA. And uh, if they aren't already on the iSpark website, I'll make sure that to have a document with all the links for these documents too. And then for the athletes that are in the public school system right now, if any of the schools are actually integrating them back to sport, they are guided by PHE uh, Canada too. We, the Pacific Sport Network, so we've got Vancouver Island, Fraser Valley, we are in the Okanagan region. There's Engage Sport North, up north, Whistler, and uh, in the Columbia Basin. We are all here and we are very eager to help as well. So please don't hesitate to reach out to your regional hub uh, for additional support in all of these areas. And then in this final slide, for resources, I've, I've referenced sort of rapid fire, a bunch of different techniques for your athletes to help check in, self-regulate, set some goals, accept, adapt, some team brainstorm activities to help them connect. I'm gonna to try to put it all together, maybe in a nice, um, a few one-pagers that then uh, we can upload or I'll have iSpark uh, distribute for you because um, I'm assuming not everybody was there feverishly writing notes tonight. And then this whole recording will be available as well as the slide deck as well. I'm going to give to, um, to Michelle and Laura and the team. So um, I believe that takes us to, oh, takes us to the thank you. So I don't know if there are any, are there, are there any quick and easy answers I can give Michelle? <laughs> Uh, we do we do have some questions so uh, if you want to I think um, we did have a couple of people sign off so if, if you need to feel free to do so again Shauna mentioned that uh, it is being recorded and will be available but if you have a, a little bit of extra time to uh, stay tuned for some questions I think we can um, I think we can uh, we can do that as well and just uh, I'm gonna 
I'm going to see what I can find here. <laughs> All right. Great job, Shauna. That was amazing. I, uh, I love that it started with vocabulary and just, you know, shifting the mindset in that way and, and adjusting the way uh, you use your vocabulary and then took a deep dive into some things that I think are, are practical for the workplace environment as well. So I, I thought that was awesome. Great job. Thank you so much for that. Thanks. Uh, I'm trying to find the question here. There are some. I don't know if you can see oh, them. It be easier. Here from Holly, and it says, having difficulty engaging um, athletes in sessions online. Yeah, so some love being outside, and you know, and then they're not really wanting to get inside in these. They're just, they're like Zoom fatigue, I think, is a real thing. It's mm -hmm. actually a thing, right? And yeah, so completely agree. So we want to have some kind of um, controls on it where they're not completely zoomed out. So some of uh, the teams that I've been working with have had something um, a little less daunting. So instead of meeting uh, several times a week, they'll just have the one team meeting and then they buddy up and they buddy up and they might just use their phone instead of having to be sitting in front of a computer. It's like they've got their phone and they're FaceTiming with two other, or can you FaceTime with multiple? I'm trying to think if- I think so. Yeah, I think you probably can. Yeah. So we've got training pods for safety. We've got, you know, minimum of three. And so they're kind of doing their thing, like little group works out. Somehow they're keen to do that. It's less they don't want me there. I don't know, maybe it's just me. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but just wanting to have them kind of do their own peer facilitated and then, we've started to cut down a little bit on the team meetings um, when they start to get the Zoom fatigue. And then when they start feeling lonely, we start ramping it up again. So it kind of been, again, it's, it's very individual, but that's totally a great point. Oh yeah, people are Zoomed out. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Uh, currently dealing with varsity athletes. Yes, so this is one, this is tough. For the athletes that are going to college, and, uh, and university or the ones that are training in um, competitive programs that have already made a bold statement that it's not happening in the fall, that they just got that note in terms of the universities on Monday, I believe. So we're just feeling the effects of, yep, it's really not happening. Your fall season is really not happening. Some tears, some frustration, um, fears about falling behind, fears about um, again, just kind of that, that continuum we talked about, okay, well, we go at some point, they're going to be in the motion stuck in it right now. But once that clears, and they can accept it's this is happening, then we start working through some of the strategies that we've got on here. So identifying, well, what can we focus on your fitness, your flexibility, your rehabilitation, if you're injured, your mastery of the game, take a coaching course, take an officiating course, learn the rules. There's a concept. Learn the rules. <laughs> yeah, we've had a bunch of really great innovative ideas from athletes. That ties into somebody else also asked about injuries too on here. Yeah. Oh, that's a good one. Dealing with an injury. Oh, yeah, that's a great. So, and that was tough because that was several months. That was about six to eight weeks where, you know, they weren't allowed to be seen in person. And it was kind of like, well, hold the laptop up to your elbow, show me the swelling. Like literally that was, <laughs> we had that in our own household, we had an injury. And so you're, you're, you're showing pictures of what's going on. There's no manual manipulation. So some of the athletes feel like there's some setbacks there. I'm a big believer in using visualization for healing. That's another worksheet that I could throw in there too. So getting those pathways in place for healing as well. So, you know, did you know that you can enhance blood flow by visualizing? Did you know that you can actually have an impact on the, how rapidly or how slowly um, your body responds to healing effect by visualizing? So some of these tools are pretty cool and um, I've been trying to get them to use the things that are within their control. And then as soon as they are able to get back at it, know that they can catch up, they will catch up, you know, things will settle and they, they will rehabilitate. Um, but a certain amount of anxiety and, and, and stress over that is, is totally normal. Uh, but hopefully you could 
augment some of the physical training with the mental training to help them. Hopefully that helps. Um, what were some other ones? Oh, no uh, sports in the fall. Yeah, so U15 soccer. A lot of sports have been really quiet, quiet on the front about what are we going to actually put out there. Some have been really hedgy and not wanting to make a statement yet, sort of hoping that there will be some miracle um, that, you know, in August there will be such low counts that they'll be able to have some isolated, maybe really localized competitions but I think many programs have resigned themselves to unless they are a highly individual and physically distant sport by nature so I would give some examples of archery golf tennis um, non-contact sport basically it's it's still a big question mark I think we should start preparing our teams that it's a high probability that there won't be competition starting in September and we need to do the accept and adapt and and the earlier we can get them to make their way through the wise mind <laughs> into the middle <laughs> um, probably the better although the optimist in me is always hoping something else might might be the case but you know there have been some competitions have been really innovative with you know tennis has done it even doubles has come back um, but again, it's a sport where you're, you're pretty distanced, golf as well. Winter sports, they're already worrying about it, and it's not even, it's no, no snow yet, but they're already um, looking ahead. Uh, I think we should, we should be prepared for anything and everything, if we can be. That would be my, my tip. Um, yeah, and you sports is definitely no. It's, it's out for sure. Um, I think I got all of them. Did I, I think you got them all. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, just gonna do a couple clicks here and then we'll close it out. Uh, maybe. <laughs> do you want me to stop sharing? Is that uh, what Sure, maybe. I, I, I'm just trying to see everybody's face for the closing here. <laughs> I don't know how to do that. Not that we don't love your office. Yeah, I know. Very let, impressive. Let me stop my video. Everyone's sick of looking at me. I'm <laughs> there. Oh, okay, there we go. We got yes. everybody now. Everybody Everyone that's to see me. there we go. Still sharing a video. Awesome. Um, again, just want to thank you, Shauna, for uh, the time that you took to prepare uh, the messaging tonight and um, and being with us this evening. And uh, as you mentioned, coming back next week uh, to visit with our athletes. Uh, for those of you who um, haven't seen the, the poster yet, the uh, webinar next week, um, again with uh, Dr. Taylor, um, is managing motivations from the sidelines, and that one's uh, tailored for our athletes, so please feel free to share uh, with the athletes that you're working with, um, a great one for them to attend. Uh, and then the following Wednesday, we will have um, our final webinar for this month, so June 24th at noon again, with Jeff Hackett, who is the mental performance consultant with Pacific Sport Vancouver Island, um, and he'll present our third webinar, uh, Finding the Zone Strategies for Performing Under Pressure. So a lot of good things still to come this month. Um, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Y'all are amazing. Uh, hopefully you've got some, some good tools and resources to take away. Again, we'll... Um, the, the webinar this evening has been uh, recorded, which will be accessible for you guys, as well as the slideshows and, uh, and the resource material from Dr. Taylor. Shauna, you're amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, and to you all, uh, have a great evening. Thanks for uh, sharing space with us tonight. Thanks, Michelle.